the shuttle driver into town last night got me all excited because he's like, hey, there's this great breakfast place. They've got, you know, coffee, etc. And I was all excited, only to find out that they are closed until the 23rd due to Thanksgiving. So breakfast is a burrito out of a uh, frozen vending machine. Sadly, the Keurig is uh, not very good. So uh, I'm doing coffee the old-fashioned way. Okay, kind of a reluctant start this morning. Because the main market was closed last night, I had to wait till this morning to resupply. And since it didn't open super early, I'm uh, gonna have to kind of rush here. Okay, and I just got my first good news in days because just as I was going with, hey, I'm gonna have to do a uh, north side, they had beans. So I had beans, rice, and taco seasoning for dinner. Some Cracker Barrel cheese, which is in Tillamook, but depressingly few places have Tillamook out here. And then uh, my snack food is the thing that I end up stressing about. In addition to having most what I wanted, people that run Jake's were just super friendly. When they didn't have a small toothpaste, the guy recommended I run over to the dentist and he's like, oh, wait a second. Ran out to his truck and gave me a small toothpaste. It does look like there was a bit of a dusting of snow in the high country back there. It should be clearish for a couple of days and then the next storm rolls in. And now I just have to rush because the shuttle's supposed to arrive in about 45 minutes. Okay, almost ready to go. My pack is a bit tight. Uh, five days of food, not the most compact, and I have a couple of extra water bottles. Yeah, when I was leaving Pie Town, the guy said, uh, precipitation, the uh, weather report. <laughs> okay, and after a slightly frenzied morning, I am back out here. It is uh, <laughs> colder and wetter than what I was expecting. I could see the trees up high. Uh, those were frosted. There's also rain slash snowstorms in the area. I have five dinners plus uh, hopefully enough snacks. I am a little uh, bulky and heavy, but uh, that's kind of the reality of doing a resupply like this. In addition, I got two more hard-sided water containers, giving me six liters of hard-sided containers. My goal is not to carry anything in the sea knock anymore. I'm convinced I'm gonna plop the pack down, pop the damn thing, and this way I can at least pack them away. Interestingly enough, there are two other hikers. They were apparently doing the, uh, the roadwalk alt. Uh, they came in last night and ended up at the other facility, not the Frisco Lodge. But same driver brought them in. And they apparently have three uh, people behind them, so I'm not the only one back here. Though, my guess is everybody's doing the Gila at this point. I only have five or six hours of daylight left, so I am uh, trying to drink as much as I can here before I uh, get going. Kind of figure I will uh, get to the water source tomorrow. Other than the uh, closed restaurant reserve was a really good stop. Uh, that market, Jake's, in uh, downtown. Well, I don't know if it's really downtown. <laughs> That's about all reserve has. That was one of the better supplied stops in the state, I think. You know, shy of the big Walmarts. I am just so relieved not to have to do north sides. North sides are kind of the default. You know, you can get them anywhere and they are... Uh, 500 some, 600 some calories. So they work. I just burned out on them so badly. But five days of rice and beans, and then at Winston, I have a box waiting for me. That will be another five days of rice and beans, assuming I can get into the post office. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm trying to chug a lot of water. Unfortunately, so Thanksgiving is coming up rapidly. Jen was looking at coming out and visiting me for Thanksgiving, but there, there's no way. It just, it doesn't make sense. She wouldn't be able to see me for any length of time. So realistically, I'm figuring five days and change to Winston. Maybe I do better, but uh, I find not betting on me exceeding expectations <laughs> is a safer bet. Most of the water carries are going to be in the low to mid to high 20s. Winston itself should be the last of the uh, hitching stops. And then after Winston, it's just Silver City and Lordsburg, which, which the trail walks through. The last of the big shortcut alts cuts away in 22 miles. That's the Gila. And then uh, I am off into that whole Black Hills section that I've been uh, wanting to do 
so badly this entire time. So I figure the uh, next 200 miles is gonna be the uh, biggest remaining challenge. You know, cold weather, snow, rain, altitude, etc. And then uh, from Silver City down, I believe it gets a little more deserty and uh, low country. And there's even somebody uh, stocking water caches down there still, so it should be a cruisier finish once I'm down there. The two food carries once I'm uh, to Silver City are 80 miles and 70 uh, some miles, so that, that's easy street compared with these, you know, 100 plus. So just have to survive the next 10 some days. My uh, general plan is 18 a day is my goal. These short days are just killing me. That means it's a goal that I can uh, exceed if things are going well. Day like today, probably be a little under. You know, I wasn't out at the trailhead and leaving until after 11. And, you know, the day before I was only able to make 16 miles just because weather and everything else. <laughs> I am regretting taking my tights off. So the fun thing I had on the water sources in this section is several of them are a not insignificant distance off trail. Kind of uh, par for the course in some areas. One option I saw was literally a mile off trail. The good news is I do have a fair amount of confidence in water sources, uh, at least to Winston. After that, there's a couple of sections where I, I, uh, I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work out. That nice trail maintainer from up north did drop water in a couple of places. Some of them are similar to back that, there. That was one of his caches. At road access points, but at least having some reliable water is a plus. And I ended up off the red line yet again. Okay, here we are on the official red line dirt road. Not that other one which was going off in a uh, wrong direction. There are a couple of stock tanks out here that reportedly have water. Uh, last bait is they're all pretty brown, filter killing, etc. Hence why I'm uh, doing a 22 mile carry. The trail does start to climb in a little while, I kind of suspect that uh, ridge line in the background with the frosty uh, trees is where I'm headed. The good news is, at least for the moment, I seem to have been uh, dealing with the uh, pack rub. So I, don't, I think uh, that's resolved. Uh, my feet issues are just the normal, hey, you're beating your feet up for 20 some miles a day. <laughs> I haven't had that uh, rub spot like I had a ways back. It uh, came out of nowhere and, like usual, just disappeared eventually. Before I was going to run into town, I was all excited because that's actually a solar well. <laughs> Not that that would do me much good today. It is kind of funny. Normally when I'm doing long hikes, the morning there's a couple of hours where, you know, the coffee's humming, I'm just bopping along the music, mind running a mile a minute. And then, uh, Sometime later in the morning, around noon or so, things slow down. I switch to audiobooks. Things will tend to drag through the early afternoon. That was really the case on the PCT. I remember afternoons in Oregon just lasting forever. And then uh, as it gets within a couple hours of dark, suddenly I enjoy the day more. And, you know, it feels like, okay, things aren't going to go wrong. I'm, I'm this close. I can make it. And so the end of the day, it's usually kind of my most effective, happiest time. This late though, you know, it's 12 o'clock right now. I only have like five hours of daylight left. So plus side, there is uh, less of that dragging middle of the day feeling. Downside, it is just hard to make miles without uh, hiking in the dark, which I can do, but I prefer not to. Miss the views and things like that. There's only uh, you know, so many hours in the day and usually only doing two and a half, three miles tops. And obviously the uh, terrain has an effect as well. 
when I'm uh, road walking, I get, you know, consistent three-ish mile an hour pace, but it can just be dull. There's, you know, I can't lose myself because of the constant traffic noise. I still have to find some sort of uh, noise canceling headphones that'll let me listen even when those damn trucks pass by. And uh, if the views, you know, like this, the views are kind of nice. I'm enjoying this. But down to Pie Town, that was just soul killing and endless. The trail sections are usually nice because, you know, you go up and over, little rises, things like that. Generally, your view is changing over time, which helps uh, keep me just kind of lost in the hiking vibe. That was a problem for the uh, southern sections of Florida, though, because you'd be on, you know, some flat canal path through the Everglades going out as far as you can possibly see. It was just brutal on my feet as well. But that all got better once I got to uh, Florida Trail proper. Well, I guess that got better for Big Cypress and then uh, north of Clewiston was where I really started to like that trail. I know I harp on the Florida Trail, but part of that is because I hear so many just offhand negative comments from uh, people who haven't done it about, you know, road walks and dog attacks and things like that. But that is... Uh, Seriously underselling it. It is one of the most unique hikes I have done in the uh, continental U.S. And allegedly, a few years ago, a uh, sheriff was hiking who uh, was carrying a gun and shot a lot of the uh, aggressive dogs. So probably safer now than it was, you know, back in 21. I get that the swamps look intimidating, especially if you never hiked terrain like that. But you know what? Everything is uh, intimidating out here. I was intimidated by having a 37-mile water carry. Now, I can do it once I'm out in the middle of things. It just is what it is, but there is always a certain amount of nervousness about any of this. You know, like now, who knows what the weather's going to do. I, I just use that to kind of uh, make sure that I'm paying attention and prepared. Just got to be careful not to uh, go overboard. And listen to the fear people that they don't want to do X, Y, Z thing. And they're uh, trying to discourage others. Kind of make themselves feel better. I am 42 years old. I have had knee surgery. I have had more than my share of problems. I get pack rash. I get foot rash. Anything I can manage, you know, other people can manage. It's just about putting yourself out there. Ah, see, I didn't get off trail. So that route I was on before, that must be the old uh, red line, and they rerouted it to be closer to the well in this section because of the lack of water sources. This is partially why I don't get too religious about the red line. I uh, Obviously, I don't like the alts out here that shortcut some section of the trail. But, I mean, I did take uh, standing bear, spotted bear, whatever that was in the bob because that looked better and it was high route instead of a canyon. And obviously when it's safety based, like the weather in Colorado, I will uh, jump off segments. To me, there's a big difference between that and the, uh, you know, there was a, some guy on the AT that was trying to touch every blaze, for example. That's why I don't harp too much on the whole like purist identity thing. If anything, I make fun of myself when I uh, start talking to people and they ask how much how much I have left on this. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm kind of doing that weirdo red line thing through here. So I have such and such. It's more about just wanting to finish, to feel like after the fact that I did the trail, not just that I, you know, finished whatever the bare minimum was. If you're curious on the altitude, I've been at about 7,000 and this section is gonna have me climbing back up to eight or nine. So per my friendly shuttle driver, it actually snowed in Pie Town last night. It does look like there was a uh, reasonable dusting up high. The weather has been holding so far, but this mud is a pain. So far it's been a much better day than it looked this morning. And up we go.
nothing like a big steep climb right after a resupply with a day and change of water. <laughs> seen them in a while. Didn't hear any bugling. Best time of day. Oh, I am missing part of the view. 522. And while I love this time of night, it is gonna get dark pretty quick. I decided to go up and over after the last saddle. Didn't have anything that really spoke to me, camping wise. So pretty much the next uh, good campsite I find, probably gonna be home sweet home. Sun went down, temperature took a rather steep dive, so it was either set up my tent or uh, layer up and uh, keep going by a headlamp. So I decided I'm good. I got over the uh, the high point for now. So this is actually really, really nice hiking other than uh, it'll be a little nicer in the morning with another night's uh, less food. Home sweet home for the night.